Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna start out this set with a uh, with a song that I, I co-wrote with a wonderful Irish singer and songwriter called Jerry O'Byrne. You might remember a song that he wrote for Morrow O'Connell called Western Highway. Beautiful song. So so he and I wrote a bunch of songs um, for for the new album, and this is one of them. We started writing this song in in Dublin in May, and we finally finished it in Dingle in August. And it's called So Much Rain. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know you probably would like some rain here. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd rather have too much rain than too little, but that's, I guess that's why I moved to <laughs> England and Ireland. The rain falls and sheets on the pay. Flashing the passers by. This time is always gray, and it's grayer tonight. Wind sings a desolate lullaby. So much rain that I can't see through. I thought we.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, that one's going to be on the new album, and so is the, the next one that I'm about to do, which is another new song that I wrote recently. Um, I've been writing this, this next song for a while. I, I started writing it actually during that first American tour. I was in Lincoln, Nebraska when I started writing the song, and it never quite seemed complete. And then recently, we were on tour last May, and I was in Chincoteague, Virginia, and I was chatting with our hosts about how I really like that sort of old-fashioned school of songwriting where they have a thing called The Verse at the beginning, which isn't, it isn't a verse as we know verses, it's just one thing called the verse, and it's, at the be it's kind of an intro section that it's at the beginning of the song, and then the song proper starts. And I said, you know what, when I wrote that song, What Are We Gonna Do?, I kind of toyed with the idea of having a verse at the beginning of it, and then I thought maybe that was too old-fashioned or something, and Martin said, yeah, you know, that song has always seemed kind of incomplete to me, and, and, and so... Shortly after that, we found ourselves in a motel room in San Antonio, and, uh, and I sat down and I wrote the verse. So there you go. The song's called, What Are We Gonna Do? I didn't know that kiss was coming I guess I could have started running Soon as I saw what you were thinking Serves me right I shouldn't have been drinking, but anyway, you did. So let's consider what are we gonna do about it, this little thing that you and me have started. Tonight is not love, I might just fall in love with you. that this was unexpected If you hadn't kissed me I'd regret it Cause when you leaned my way I couldn't turn my face from you What are we gonna do? This could be the end so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Randy. High praise. Thank you. These are a couple of uh, old-timey tunes now called Shady Grove and Cluck Old Hen.
Yeah, this is a beautiful guitar, isn't it? It was made for me by a fellow called Andy Manson, who's made guitars for lots of people far more illustrious than myself. As Randy pointed out, he's made guitars for Martin Barr and Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. And he's, his main client is John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. He's made about 16 different instruments for him of all kinds, mandolins and guitars and things with mandolin necks and guitar necks at odd angles. And he's not and a guy you can go just buy his guitars commercially. No. Oh, okay. No, in <laughs> fact, when I, when I called him up and I asked him to make a guitar for me, at first he said he, he wouldn't. At first he said he only made guitars for people he knew. And, and I, I basically begged. And, and he said, well, he said, is there somewhere I can come and hear you play? And I, I was actually doing a half hour opening set for another artist um, up the road from him. And so I told him that and he said, OK, he said, I'll come and hear you and, uh, and, and then we'll talk. So I was really nervous, <laughs> but I got through it and he made me the guitar. Woo-hoo! And if you look on his website, there's pictures of me on the website playing it. So it's really cool. <laughs> Well, I just asked, it's his design. I asked him for as deep a cutaway as he could give me, and I said I wanted a guitar with kind of a shallow body because I don't like feeling like, oh, I have to reach out. I've got a big old Martin Dreadnought, and it's beautiful. It's a lovely guitar. It's a D28 from 1965, and gorgeous guitar. But, oh, I always feel like I'm reaching over it. You know, this this is... This is a comfy guitar. I think it all fits. It's a lady's guitar. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really brave here and, and play a very new song. I only finished... This is another of the songs, but this, this whole song I, I wrote in that, in that motel room in San Antonio. I, I was really ill. I was meant to be going to the Kerrville um, Festival, and, and I got really sick and, and couldn't go. And so the only thing... And I was flying out in three days, so the only thing to do was just hole up in an air-conditioned motel room for three days and, um, and, and sit and play my guitar and write songs. And so, so it's actually kind of good that I, that I got really ill. But this song, I was thinking about my little girl. Um, I've got a little girl who's six years old, and she is totally fearless. You know, if there's a cliff edge, she will go right up to it and look down. And, uh, you know, if there's a body of water, she'll run into it, and, and it terrifies me. And I think, if I'm this way when she's six, what am I going to be like when she's 16, you know? And, uh, and, and Michelle here in the front was, was, was telling me about her daughter who's, who's going off to Afghanistan in, in a couple of weeks' time. And, and oh my gosh, I, I feel for you. I think the hardest thing to do when you're a parent is to realize that you have to, you have to let your children, no matter what age they are, you have to let them take risks and you have to let them go out there and, and make their own mistakes and live their own lives. And, and that's a really hard thing to do. So I wrote this song about that. It's called Lift You Up and Let You Fly. And it's, it's on a new album as well. But I've only played, this is only the third time I've ever played this song in public, so be kind to me. <laughs> <laughs> I will. What's her name? Her name is Nicole Danielle Kramer. This is for Nicole Danielle Kramer. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. My pretty little pearl, you've got fragile little bones. The beauty in your eyes leaves me terrified. There's so much danger in this world I'm scared to let you out alone Scared to let you spread your baby wings and take a flight Though my belly made you I can't hold you, I can't cage you I can't lay my fears to rest But I can try To lift you up
when I set you free And you fly away from me And we might not come back at all I lift you up and let you Sorry, I, I got very emotional <laughs> for a minute and totally forgot where my fingers were supposed to go. But um, thank you very much. Right, I'm gonna. I, I, I've got to do a nice, um, lively one. Otherwise, I'll start to cry. This is called West Virginia Boys, and it's another audience participation number. And your participation in this is absolutely essential because instead of having a chorus that you sing along with, what happens in this one is the last line of every verse is sung by you back to me after I've sung it. Okay. So you see, if I sing the line and then there's a dead silence, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> so so you got to sing. And the lines that you're going to be singing are, at the end of the first verse, cornbread, molasses, and sassafras tea. <laughs> cornbread, molasses, and sassafras tea. I've got all that stuff in the <laughs> Excellent. I am very happy to hear it, Randy. And then at the end of the second verse, you sing, honey. Can you bake your Johnny Cakes brown? Honey, can you bake your Johnny Cakes brown? brown? Yep. At the end of the third verse, a pair of cotton socks that he wears the year round. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> and at the end of the fourth and last verse, get up and fix my breakfast, you good for nothing thing. <laughs> Come on, all you Virginia gals, and listen to my noise. Don't you mess round with West Virginia boys. If and you do, your ration will be cornbread, molasses, and sassafras tea. Cornbread, molasses, and sassafras tea. Oh, that was wonderful. I, I heard a harmony starting to happen on that. Please do continue with it. Ah, no, it was cool. It was lovely. When it comes to Gordon, he'll bring along a chair. First, then he'll say, my daddy killed a deer. Next, then he'll say, before he sits down, honey, can you bake your Johnny Cakes brown? Honey, can you bake your Johnny Cakes brown? When it comes to Gordon, tell you what he'll wear. A long tail coat, just about to tear. Pair of old boots with tops turned down. Pair of cotton socks that he wears the year round. Pair of cotton socks that he wears the year round. When it comes to Gordon, he'll whisper in your ear. First it's honey lamb, then it's deer. After you're married, no such thing. Get up and fix my breakfast, too good for nothing thing. So come on, all you Virginia gals, and listen to my noise. Don't you mess round with West Virginia boys. If and you do, your ration will be cornbread, molasses, and sassafras tea. 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 <laughs> 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 Oh, 
Oh, thank you very much. That was just wonderful. Um, I'm going to do a song now that was written by Ewan McCall for his wife, um, Peggy Seeger. And uh, it's a beautiful song. It's been recorded by lots of people, not least uh, Roberta Flack, who uh, recorded it for the soundtrack of the film Play Misty for me. And Johnny Cash did a beautiful job on it. It's called The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. Thank you. Well, we're getting down to the end of the evening now. I reckon I got two more for you, and, and then I'll and then I'll love you and leave you. Um, this is uh, I got to learn to be careful what I say. Um, 
I mentioned earlier about those old-fashioned songs with a verse at the beginning. Um, this is this is one of the authentic uh, ones from the, from the period. As I say, it's from it was written by a pair of songwriters called Rogers and Hart, Richard Rogers and and Lorenz Hart back in the 1930s. Um, Richard Rogers is a lot more well known for his collaboration with Oscar Hammerstein, a different lyricist, and they wrote you know. Oklahoma and the Sound of Music and Blue Moon and My Funny Valentine, all those. But um, I have to say, I, 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 they didn't write Blue Moon and My Funny Valentine. Rogers and Hart did. I tell a lie. Rogers and Hammerstein wrote um, Carousel, the big musicals, and that. Rogers and Hart wrote great songs like Blue Moon and My Funny Valentine. And this is another great song they wrote. It's called It Never Entered My Mind. <laughs> If there's powder on my nose I don't care If my hairdo is in place I've lost the very meaning of repose I never put a mud pack on my face Oh, who'd have thought That I'd walk in a daze now I never go to shows at night but just to matinees now I see the show And home I go Once I left well I heard you say That I'd be playing solitaire It's been it's been um, it's been really lovely to be here. Big thank you to to Randy and Helen for for having me here this evening and doing a beautiful opening set. Thank you so much. Lovely songs. Thank you. Oh, I hope so too. I hope so too. And can I give a special thanks to my long suffering manager, road manager, sound engineer, driver, carrier of suitcase, all the rest. He does a beautiful job at all of it, and he's been working very hard this evening. Martin Stansbury. Yeah. Doing good. Thank you so much. So yeah, I'll 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 uh, I'll leave you with this one. It's called the last song, so it's an appropriate one to finish up with. <laughs> it's one that I wrote around the time I was I was trying to teach myself how to play guitar again after a long break. I took a long break when my kids were were babies, and um, once they got a little older, I decided to start trying to play again. And I discovered that the best time to practice was when I had just put them to bed, and I would sit in the hallway outside their bedroom and kind of noodle away on the guitar, and gradually silence would descend. <laughs> Sometimes that happens at my concerts as well. <laughs>
But um, silence this one evening was taking an especially long time to descend, and I could hear my little girl, and she was uh, she had all her dolls and her teddy bears in the bed with her, and and she was telling them off. I don't know what they were doing there. I guess they weren't following her instructions. She was giving them instructions, and they weren't following them. And she was getting really annoyed with them. And I said, are you still awake? And I think it happens to all of us at some point in our lives that we open our mouth, and out of it comes the voice of our mother yeah. or father, as the case may be. And it, it, it happened to me that night. And so I had to write a song about it. And it's 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 last song. It's the last song on the on the second of the two albums that make up the double CD. So um, so so thank you so much for coming out. It's been really 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 lovely to be here this evening. And and I hope I see you again sometime. In my bed at night I'd have the door cracked open And I'd watch that thread of light I'd listen to my mother As she played her old guitar I'd say, do Foggy went to court For the next one She'd say, all right but now this has to be the last song Are you still playing? Go to sleep, child The sun is down, you're safe and sound The sand has on his way Honey, close your eyes Time to be quiet